Lots of ingredients in today's soup. Teeny tiny micro albums, keepsake albums. A unique binding system with Amy Ballou and Joe Rotella is back with an album for storing ideas, all mixed up into our scrapbook soup. Today's scrapbook soup has been brought to you in part by Spellbinders, dye templates for cutting, embossing, and stenciling. Beautiful details, inspiring creativity. Spellbinderspaperarts.com Stamp, sprinkle, tap, heat, wow. Wowembossingpowder.co.uk Sakura Color Products of America Sakuraofamerica.com Thanks for joining us on Scrapbook Soup, where we mix up all of our favorite techniques and supplies. I'm Julie McGuffey, and this is Julie Faith and Balza. We continue with our overriding theme of journaling and words, but our platform today is albums, and you know, they come in all shapes and sizes. And I brought one here, which is a teeny tiny album inside of a box. This is actually a wedding album for my sister and brother-in-law. And there you can see. Love the way the it flips out. It's the teeny tiny album. And I just undo this ribbon to release the album. And there you go. And you know, even in a journal this size, I really feel like the journaling is important. And you can see that I have this type journaling throughout the album. And I know that you also brought some teeny tiny albums. I did. And we'll start with the teeniest. Look how tiny this is. And this was all done with little tiny photographs. So you can go from any size. And this is actually a flag album. It has nothing to do with flags, except that when you open it up, it kind of waves. And here we have the journaling right in front of the album because it is very important. This little album here actually has flashcards inside it. So it's photographs, but there's also a title underneath. And for something very, very simple and very, very small, an album made out of name badge holders. So many fun ideas. And I'll be right back with a teeny tiny album. We're going to make a teeny tiny mini album full of Instagram photos. This is from a recent visit of my brother's girlfriend's niece to New York City. And if you were going to put it on a shelf, I would probably tie it with this ribbon. But if it's going in your purse as a brag book, it's kind of better to rubber band it so that it's safe and sound. So the first thing I do is I just ripped a strip of watercolor paper. And all their measurements are going to be on the website. And I've drawn some squares with a pencil. And what those squares are for is just a place for me to know where I'm going to doodle because it's the same same size as each of the photos. And all I'm doing is creating these borders around here. And I'm just using a permanent pen. I know this may look like black, but it's actually a brown pen. And I'm just making a double border here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do some stripes. But of course, when I color it in, I want a pen with a slightly thicker tip. So I'm gonna take the same brown color, but in a thicker tip. And then that's just gonna make coloring things in go a little bit faster. And again, I'm not a neat colorer. I'm just playing around, having a good time, letting it go. So there are some doodles that are very simple, like this one, but I also wanted to show you kind of, let's say a fancy doodle. So one of my favorite doodles to do is curls. I just love the way they look. Now they're not hard. You just start with a sort of half circle connected to another half circle. And if you mirror that half circle, connected to another half circle. And then all I'm gonna do is just fatten that up. And the pens make it really easy. You have excellent control. You don't have to worry about anything. And you just continue around making it really easy. And then where I've mirrored it, I'm again gonna mirror it at the top. Half a circle, loop it around, half a circle, loop it around and suddenly you know it's looking a lot more complex just because I've mirrored it and then on the sides what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half a loop and now the curl goes the other way 
and it's just changing it up a tiny bit, but that one tiny change is gonna make this look again so much more complicated. And now I'm just going to mirror it. There you go. And now I'm starting to have a really rich and complex looking doodle. Now I have one here in which I have already done all my doodling. There you go. And you can see that I've alternated between doing black and white panels and color panels, but they're all permanent waterproof pen. And the reason this is important is I'm about to add some watercolor. So I'm taking this brush that already has water in it and I'm just gonna go into my watercolor and grab some of that nice color. And then what I wanna do is I wanna coat some color on the inside edges here, but not totally into the center. And I wanna add some water because that color's a little dark for me. And I'm just gonna brush it through again, being messy, not worrying, and you can see how it gets lighter. Now, if it's still too dark for you, one of the things that is a girl's best friend is a piece of paper towel, because I'm just gonna blot it. And when I lift it up, look how beautiful that is, super easy. And the same thing to clean my brush. I just wipe it off until it comes away clear. Then I can switch to exactly whatever the next color is that I want. And this time, instead of watercoloring on the inside, we're gonna watercolor on the outside. And again, because watercolor is transparent, I don't have to worry about going over those pen lines. They're still all gonna show through that transparent watercolor. And this is the reason I'm using watercolor paper because I want it to be able to soak up that paint and not curl. So there you go. And once all of my watercoloring is done, and here you can see I have one. I have all these tiny Instagram photos that were taken during Francesca's trip to New York. And it's so easy to just put them each inside their little doodled frames. And before you know it, you have a fantastic mini album that has told a story through all these lovely pictures. We'll be right back. Well, Julie and I are here with a fun project. And you know, sometimes when you want to tell a simple story, it's best when you can start with something that's already been started for you. Isn't it great when everything is 95% done and all we have to do is add photos and a few embellishments? Yeah, some creative flair. And so we have this great album here, which has all these bits and pieces and exciting things, some divided page protectors. It just makes it really easy to tell your story, you yeah. know? And the page protectors are in different formats. Sometimes it's for one photograph, sometimes it's for four, sometimes it's for two. Well, let's get started. Let's we? do it. Okay, so we're gonna start with this page right here, Julie. And first of all, we'll put a mat down and mm -hmm. you'll notice that everything is coordinated. Right. And the photo on top. And let's add some squiggles. We've got okay. one That right little flight here. line. There we go, and we can have a butterfly that's flying, or even a bird. Let's do a butterfly, mm -hmm. and you know what? Let's. Pop. And I like that there's so many different stickers on that one sheet. It gives you a lot of oh, possibilities, yes. a lot of choices. One sheet, and we can fill this album, right? <laughs> so I've actually popped up this butterfly, which is cool. And I've actually got a sheet of stickers here, and I think this girl looks kind of super cool. Add some wording. And it's that easy. How long did it take us, like 30 seconds? I know, there I we love go. that. All right, let's do this other one here. Now this page protector has two pockets in it. We've got a mm -hmm. photograph, and we're going to add this folder here. So we're gonna start with so a blank folder. So the folder comes just like this, already right? open. Mm -hmm. You can slip your journaling in there, some more photos. We can and add, let's some add some words. Let's add some more embellishments. We'll use <laughs> stickers and... I think it's appropriate that you've got the pretty embellishments pad. and I've got all the words going on. <laughs> and we have a sweet little birdie here. There. Let's pop him up too. I like you know, the I like these word phrase stickers sometimes because you know it can be hard to think of how you want to kind of caption a photo. Yeah. Although I'm always on journaling and feeling like it's really important to say what you're thinking, but this is a great way to do it without having to work well, too hard. Well, I have at to it. say that we're not usually at a loss for words, but sometimes <laughs> you know it does help to have a little bit of help. There I want to just go. show how easily this looks so dimensional, but it slips into this pocket really easily. Mm -hmm. I just push it boom and even that little butterfly there you go that's it, so dimensional it's going to go, right, gonna in go there. right in right and i think you already said this is a great place to put the journaling right yes very very sweet. cool okay now let's do this one this page protector has four pockets 
and oh, we'll pop that Have fun here. with the bingo card. Isn't that cool? Really cute. A winner every time. Uh, that's all I can say. So here we've got Wait a little Wait a second. I thought that you had pre-done this with some tape under. Nope. That's nope. actually printed nope. on there. Comes like that. Comes I love like that. that. The washi Very tape easy. look. And then we're just going to add a mat. And we're okay. going to add a photo. And then you can just slide it all slide right it in there. Slide it all in. And we could add some words. Add and some, some journaling. And, and because journaling. if you could just add your text. And this is the thing, which is sometimes people have trouble with journaling feeling like it's looking kind of ugly or not right. And this is just so easy because you just scribble out in your own handwriting or type it up, slip or it in there. Or you could use LOL and put it right here. That's, I love yeah, that idea. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's a really good one. Well, I'll All right. take this away. Let's do this other one right here. And there's a really cool technique with this. Is that over to mm -hmm. you? Okay. And again, Whoa. we use photos and ready-made mm -hmm. uh, ready pieces. We've added stickers, but let's add this This is actually here. on the outside of the page protector. Mm -hmm. And that's a great idea so that you mix when you're looking through that album, that kind of tactile with, you know, smooth look. And I see that you're cutting a triangle out of I the base am. of that. We're taking a border and we're going mm -hmm. to make a banner. Let me just measure. We're just going to snip right here. I love the eyeball measuring. Perfect Me too. every time. And since it doesn't have to go in the protector, it doesn't actually exactly have to match. Right. And then we could add the title on here with letters. There's lots of letters yeah. over there to choose from. And, and then we can I pop think up that another button. This butterfly. is one of the coolest I think so things too. around. That's awesome. Because all that you have to do in order to make this is I see you have all these little mm -hmm. strips of tape here and you just peel it off, slip it around a paper clip. It's adhesive on the back since it's a sticker. Stick it together. And you've automatically got this gorgeous double-sided paper clip, which you can just stick right on the there to flag time. and mark that page. Well, I put it right on her face. Maybe yeah, not there. <laughs> maybe positioning maybe wasn't as perfect, but well, let's I think look that's through a great this idea. album and see all the pretty things that are inside here. And again, I like that it's a mixture of loose pages and then some things in some page protectors. Isn't that cute? Those little washi I tape love, flags. I love that. Done the same way as the paper clips. But do you know what I'm noticing? Mm -hmm. The the samples that we're doing, the pages that we just did. It was for girls. Yes. Now these are all photographs of boys and I the colors know. of the paper, they work just as well, whether it's, it's a boy true. or a girl. I, I like really that you can put like part. a graduation card or something yes. inside here. And of course there are all, all sorts souvenirs. of different sizes, right? Because they have 12 by 12 protectors and you can do it in whatever works for you. And I like the idea that it's so customizable for your personal choices. Right. And you can personalize it any way you want for whatever reason that you want to scrapbook for whatever season. But this is a great graduation. A a great way to tell a and story. Very simple. This is awesome. And we'll be right back. Well, we're talking about albums today, and Amy Ballou is here, and she's going to show us how to make professional looking albums in like five minutes. This looks so wonderful, Amy. What do we do? Well, basically what we're going to start out with, I have a photo book right here that I have of a birthday party. And this one actually is a way to make sounds. So you can go ahead and press the record button and say, for instance, happy birthday. And happy birthday. So that oh, way, like that. <laughs> and this way you can like tell your story, tell about what happened at the birthday party. And I'm going to go ahead, and this is a six by eight book. So I'm going to go ahead and line up my pages the way I like it, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go ahead and put it on a binding system. Okay, now I noticed that when you put that down, the red light came on. Yes, what it's doing right here, it has a resin glue in it, so it's going to heat it up, and it takes about 90 seconds. Oh, that's and, fast. Yeah, uh -huh. and during that time, um, we're just going to leave it here, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to another book so mm -hmm. we can go ahead and start scrapbooking. Um, this one right here is a 12 by 12 book and uh, it's leather and it's real nice and this one's already been pre-bound and it's of one of my friend's weddings. Oh, that is beautiful. So, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a little bit more personal before I hand it over to mm -hmm. her because I got to decorate it. And so I've gone ahead and pre-cut out some pieces that I'd like to scrapbook and my friend's right here so I'm going to put it on the front. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head ahead and I've placed some adhesive on the back. Uh -huh. And I'm going to glue all these together. Okay. So. Here, let me just move that one over here for you. All right. And this one is the way it's going to look. And I went ahead and put some ribbon. This is kind of what she had tied around the chairs at the wedding. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around the edges. And as you can see, we have it already wrapped up here. 
And I'm going to go ahead and remove the adhesive on the back, like so. Okay. And then we just place it right on the front of the book. I love yeah. the way you've incorporated the ribbon from the actual wedding. I mean, what a keepsake. That's just, that's a wonderful idea. And they can keep it forever because it's going to be nicely adhered to their book. Right. So. Mm -hmm. And then I want to go ahead and incorporate some of the flowers that they had. And she had some more white flowers. So I'm just going to take this sticker here and I'm just going to place it in the middle and just kind of give it a nice little touch That's for her. That's a perfect final touch, Amy. That is so pretty. Your friend is very special. She's lucky to have you. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. And as we see, this is still kind of heating up for us. Now, how do we know that uh, when our 90 seconds is up? Do we have to set a timer or watch the clock? Or? No, actually, it should be turning green just there like it did. Uh -huh. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take it and just move it to the side and just let it cool like that. Um, the reason I'm keeping it upright is just so the glue stays exactly where it is. It's not going to slide because it's still pretty hot. Right. So we just want to leave it there for the moment. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and make another book. Okay. Um, this one's a baby book. One of my friends have already um, just had a baby boy. Oh, and I so. love this blue metallic color. I love the texture on here. It's just gorgeous. I, I thought it was great. And especially, you know, you have to have blue for the boys. Oh, well, so. of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the window cut out. So that way I have like a picture of the family, how they're interacting. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and already made a photo book of these. So I have all my pages. And I'm just going to go ahead and line them up. And you printed all these out on your own home mm -hmm. inkjet printer? Just on that eight and a half by 11 paper. So you can use any kind of photo book paper or just normal copy paper and even documents like the right. birth certificates you can exactly. place in there. And then the glue is already in the binding for us. That mm -hmm. makes it really easy so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to place this right ahead onto the binding system again. The red light comes on. Yep, and it's going to be another 90 seconds for this book to go ahead and take place. So we're going to leave that one there. And since this is a, such a great keepsake, you can do the same as we did with the wedding book and kind of mm -hmm. add some embellishments and make it kind of fun. Okay, now you have another small book to show us as well. Yes, this one's for a birthday party as well. I just thought it would be kind of fun. We had um, just a little party up in the backyard. So I went ahead and took my friend's photos and just take the four by sixes. And what it is, I have these in sheets right here. So we're not actually going to use the binding machine nope, this to one you do can this do. album. You can do it right at the party. Yeah, so I mean it makes a great gift and they can have instant pictures too mm -hmm. that day. So I'm just going to line them up. Okay. And then it comes with a guide sheet right here as you can Oops, see. There we go. <laughs> and I'm going to line them out as well. And you can see that where it says to put the staples. Okay. And so all you have to do is literally take Bring your stapler you. and line it up and place it just like so. Oh, that so. is so easy. I love anything with a guide. <laughs> and it's already bound for you. So I'm just gonna remove this uh, guide right here, remove some of the paper, and I'm gonna place it into my happy birthday album right here, so. And what I'm gonna do, place it in the spine of the book. And you see these white tabs right here? Uh-huh. These are adhesive. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that on one side only and place it back in the spine. And I'm gonna actually close the book so it lines up perfectly. Okay. And I'm just gonna press there. And then you have oh. a special envelope for us. Yep. And, and then green. in the meantime, the green light has come on and our baby book is finished. And well, you did it. Yeah. Four albums in five minutes. Amy, exactly. thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank and you. we'll be right back. Well, I'm here with Joe Rotella, and he's going to share his gorgeous inspiration book with us. Joe, show me what you brought. Well, you know, I find a lot of times I'm using the same techniques over and over and over again, and I kind of get in a rut. So I decided to make a little book to try to show all the different materials I could work with, all the different things I could do. Um, so I put some vinyl here on the front page. and The detail cutting on that is amazing. Oh, I love it. And I put some envelopes so that when I have ideas, I can just shove them in there. And I thought we could add a new page to the book today. I love that idea. So I'm going to pass that over to you. Thank you. I just started with some plain chipboard album. Mm -hmm. And I covered both sides of it with paper, inked the edges. Mm -hmm. and. We're going to make this little tiny mushroom house. So cute. It looks like a smart yeah. house to me. <laughs> he started as a little card and the little door opens, but we're going to make them a little smaller and we're going to put them on the album. Cool. Well, show us how you're going to do it. Well, I'm using an electronic cutting machine, and the nice part about this is I can go find any image that I like on the web and just bring it right in. This is a coloring book image of a mushroom house, and it's one of my favorite, cool. favorite things to work with. 
Now, Joe, are there any rules about like what kind of images you can use or anything like that? Well, when you're cutting and piecing things together, stained glass windows, coloring pages work the best. But in terms of licensing, you want to be sure if you're going to resell anything that you've checked the royalty policy, copyright policy, angel policy. Since this is for personal use, um, I feel fine just using it in this project. So there's my little mushroom house. And what I want to do now is do every piece in a different color so I can just break it up. And the nice part of breaking it up is now I can pull out all these separate components. Oh, so it's like a paper piecing that we're used to having to take a really long time to cut each layer individually. But what you're doing is in the software, you're dividing it up so that you'll be able to just do it all in one pass in through the one, machine. In one fell swoop. And I'm just going to lay out the pieces, different parts of the mat. And then there's a lot of little pieces here that are so tiny, like the doorknob mm -hmm. is probably less than an eighth of an inch. I can just delete it. When I'm all done there, I have all the pieces for the house. But I'd like to go a step further. And I actually have them already laid out here, all done, ready to roll. And I've got some titles. I want to add a title to that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. You can see I worked on it already. But let me show you what I did. I'll just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I can go over here and pick any font that's on my machine. And that gives you a ton of flexibility. And choose fonts that really match the theme of your design. I like this black chancery. It kind of looks a little bit Fantasia-like Yeah, to me. I was you know, thinking a it's a very fantastical, fun font. I'm just going to write the word fantasy and put that on the mat. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see, if we were to cut this just the way it is, it's mm -hmm. going to cut all these individual letters. Right. And I don't want to sit and glue all those individual letters. Oh, I didn't even think about that. It's a lot of work. It's nice, but I'm kind of moving fast. So I'm going to just drag each letter over so they mm -hmm. overlap. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I can then grab everything together and weld it. Which and is now the click and the it mouse. overlaps it. Yep. And similarly, so that's all going to cut out then as one big piece yeah. that you just glue all together. And I told the software to make mm -hmm. a shadow layer as well. So I've got a shadow there. Oh, now, so it's a mat for the title. Exactly. Now I'm going to put it on the mat. You always want your mat to be clean. A little trick is just clean it with a wet wipe. Okay. Um, as long as there's no alcohol in there, it'll clean just fine. I've gone ahead and laid all the papers out on a mat. I see you've got lots of different colors on there. And they match exactly the layout of the mm -hmm. materials on the screen. So how does the paper stick to the mat? Um, the mat's a little sticky, kind of uh, like a repositionable note. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to just take things on and off. And when you clean it, that doesn't take the sticky off? As long as there's no alcohol in that wipe, you'll be just fine. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just set the blade to be at that corner of the paper. Uh huh. And I know you said that you could use all sorts of materials, so you just adjust the pressure of the machine for the different material? Exactly. And now it's cutting all those pieces at the same time. I love that. I love anything where you can do a lot of stuff all at once. So that made it really, really easy. And you can see that it cuts all the different wow, pieces. Wow, that was really fast. I don't know why. I thought it would take longer it, somehow. It cuts at about 25 inches a second. Wow. And I have it on about half speed right now. Cool. Does the speed affect the accuracy of the cut or anything like that? Um, not. It depends on the material. If I'm cutting something really, really detailed, if we have time to look, you'll see there's a okay. thorn on a rose. I'd slow it down a little bit. Okay. But these are kind of big shapes, so they're pretty easy to cut. That's amazing. <laughs> so we're done. We take it out. And you can see if we just take off the pieces, there's the oh, outline of the house. Oh, it peels off so easily. Yep, and then we would have this layer as well. So we'd take off all the pieces, glue them together. Okay. The last thing I wanted to show you was how yeah. easily we can print and cut Wait, an Joe, image. I want to see what it looks like when it's all together. Oh, when it seats all together. <laughs> well, you know, thanks to the magic, there's oh, a piece it's all together. And I love how you do see that tiny little door detail. And I like the dimension yep, yep. that you've added in. OK, so show me the other thing show that you you're going to show. The last thing here is I want to show you how easily we can cut an image that we've printed. So this image has been printed out. So that was printed out of this machine? No, no. You want to print on your printer. Oh. So any printer will work just fine. OK, that's cool. And we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and say cut. And there's a laser inside mm -hmm. the machine that helps line everything up. So when I say cut, I it's can go gonna ahead. It's going to cut exactly where you exactly. want it to. I like things that line up really easily like that. Well, you'll see there's a tiny little red laser dot. Uh -huh. And all I need to do is oh, get I it lined it. up. See it exactly yeah. on the corner of the paper uh -huh. there. And then as I go ahead and cut, I just am lining it up to those red dots. And I won't okay. go through the whole process now. Um, but since I we have some limited time, me. but there we go. There we go. It's all lined up, and it makes it so easy. And the dot disappears, right? The when dot it lines disappears, up so that you and know. it's done now. It's going to exactly fussy cut 
those butterflies and that That's gnome. awesome. And I know you're working on a PC, but it, will this work for a Mac also? PC or Mac. That's great. And I've got a piece that I fussy cut already, and it just cuts out perfect around the butterflies and that little gnome. And I know there are lots of other materials that you can cut really easily. I cut some vinyl here and some paper. I cut stencil material and pushed paint through it. I cut double-sided adhesive. This is real wood veneer. Cool. Um, a little bit of fabric, and then I even etched some scratch board. And look at the detail in that scratch board. So many possibilities. You got it, embossing and even some vellum. This has been awesome, Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Well, you know, at the end of every show, we're going to share with you some journals from some of our viewers. And Julie's got two beautiful journals to show off. Well, these are from Sue Eldred. And this is the Little Black Dress Journal. And she's decorated the cover with beautiful papers and embellishments, paper embellishments. She's got ribbon on here. And she's got jewels, just absolutely gorgeous. And here's a mini memories journal. And what a beautiful gift that would be. She's got the ribbon on there and even little hat pins and a little bead, as well as the embellishment with the title inside and I just I just love the idea and the concept. I love blank journals and I love the way that these have a sort of very decorative feminine look but you certainly could change it up for a more exactly. masculine look. It's a kind uh, of journal to fit anyone because great anyone gift. can journal you know of what course. I mean? <laughs> well that's today's scrapbook soup and on our next show we take a look at a different concept for scrapbooking. What happens when there are no people? <laughs> what do you say or write when your scrapbooking has a different theme? Well we hope you'll join us to learn the answer. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com for a mix of designers, materials, and projects. All of the patterns and pages on this Series 200, all in one Scrapbook Soup. This is Show 202. Mix it all up with more Scrapbook Soup. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Scrapbook Soup Series 200 is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com to order a mix of designers, materials, and projects, all in one Scrapbook Soup. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Spellbinders, dye templates for cutting, embossing, and stenciling. Beautiful details, inspiring creativity. Spellbinderspaperarts.com Stamp, sprinkle, tap, heat, wow. Wowembossingpowder.co.uk Sakura Color Products of America. Sakuraofamerica.com